and I realized it was Aaliyah, then I just threw my A game. And then, you know, I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well. And I didn't know. And then, I was, and then she, like, it got brought up, and I was like. You're 18, you already went to your prom. Is it possible at all to have a relationship on the road? I would say it's possible, I just don't have one. <laughs> And Jay-Z had to run for cover. Remember, they was going on tour and all of this type of shit. During a recent interview, Damon Dash, a former confidant of Jay-Z, shared some surprising insights into Jay-Z's prior involvement with Aaliyah. Dash suggested that Jay-Z's intentions towards Aaliyah may have been dubious from the outset. Furthermore, he appears to have made the shocking claim that Jay-Z had a hand in Aaliyah's association with R. Kelly. Is he bitter? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he felt the way. The concern and tension between Damon Dash and Jay-Z regarding R. Kelly stemmed from a disturbing episode involving Aaliyah. R. Kelly's actions came under scrutiny, especially with the recent release of the Lifetime documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. This documentary sheds light on R. Kelly's alleged marriage to an underage Aaliyah in 1994, which followed his pursuit of an S relationship with her and purportedly impregnating her. Everybody was getting at Aaliyah, bro. Right. She was like, she was like, you know, she'll go to dinner with a but she wasn't going to just be smashing. So that was like the big deal. Like. And now Dame Dash is publicly criticizing Jay-Z for his prior collaborations with R. Kelly on their joint albums, The Best of Both Worlds in 2002 and its sequel, Unfinished Business in 2004. During an appearance on the That's F Up podcast, the co-founder of Rockefeller Records reflected on Jay-Z's working relationship with R. Kelly. Notably, R. Kelly had married a 15-year-old Aaliyah in 1994 when he was 27 years old. Dame Dash, who had a relationship with Aaliyah approximately a year before her tragic passing in 2001, expressed his disapproval of Jay-Z's decision to collaborate with R. Kelly. I just couldn't believe he did a project with R. Kelly knowing that he'd R my girl, Dash shared. I was like, just don't put my name on that. I don't want no money from that. If it is, put it to Aaliyah Foundation. Like they did this saint twice. Dame added, referring to Jay and Kelly's second collab project. During the interview with co-host Alejandro Gonzalez Charles, Damon Dash was asked for his thoughts on the R. Kelly situation, particularly in light of R. Kelly's recent conviction for T racketeering and CP. In response, Damon Dash did not mince words, stating, I think he's where he belongs. He also hinted at having firsthand knowledge of the harm R. Kelly had caused Aaliyah. Yeah, I think he's where he belongs. I mean, I, I, you know, I know Aaliyah, so I know what he did. Oh. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, like, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't be objective. When asked whether he had ever confronted R. Kelly about his treatment of Aaliyah, Damon revealed that Aaliyah had personally asked him to leave it alone completely. He also confirmed that he and R. Kelly had appeared in the same music video, although Aaliyah had requested that they not engage in any confrontations or share scenes with the bump and grind singer. So that's the thing that people would be like when Jay, when Jay was doing videos with him, I was being the video, but she, I'd be like, yo, what do you want me to do? And she's like, don't start nothing. Just don't be in no shots with him. However, after knowing the truth, Damon expressed his discomfort with the fact that Jay-Z had chosen to collaborate on an album with R. Kelly, the best of both worlds. He also recounted a time when both he and Jay-Z had pursued a romantic interest in Aaliyah, stating that she had shown interest in both of them. As a result, Damon noted that he didn't want any part of the project. I'm not on there as an executive producer. Just don't put my name on that. I don't want no money from that. If it is, put it towards the Aaliyah Foundation. Moreover, Damon showed his concerns that it raised his eyebrows when he came to know that Jay-Z was thinking, and he and Damon were in some sort of competition to see who would win his heart first. I didn't look at her like that because she was like a tomboy, Dash started. She was little to me, but then one time I guess we had the same bookkeeper, and I walked past. Every time I saw her, she looked different. She had different looks every time, and I was like, who the F is that? Damon Dash mentioned that he put forth his best effort in pursuing Aaliyah, only to later discover that Jay-Z had also shown interest in her. He expressed his initial frustration upon learning this, saying, I wasn't aware that Jay was also interested. He mentioned that the situation became complicated as they were both vying for her attention. Eventually, they both encountered each other, and the outcome was a lengthy and complex story. Aaliyah, dated her. What's her legacy? Coolest girl in the whole world. You know, too good for this world. 
Damon went on to explain that many people in their circle were pursuing Aaliyah. He mentioned that she would agree to have dinner with someone, but she wasn't inclined to engage in intimate relationships casually. The primary focus for many was figuring out who could establish a meaningful connection with Aaliyah. Everybody was getting at Aaliyah, bro, he continued. She'll go to dinner with the N, but she wasn't going to just be smashing. So that was the big deal. Like, who can get with Aaliyah? The music executive went on to disclose that Jay-Z had become noticeably resentful once he discovered that Damon was pursuing Aaliyah. Damon explained that he had some feelings about it, but it was common knowledge. People tried to act like he was really involved with her. Although he was sending gifts and making romantic gestures, he was courting her. So they were both putting in a lot of effort, and we coincidentally found themselves in the same house on the 4th of July. So we were both going hard. And we, right. end, and we ended up in the same house for 4th, 4th of July. So we were, for some reason, this, this day... Wait I'm a minute, like, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house? Yeah. It was a situation where Aaliyah's attention might sway toward him one moment and then toward me the next. Damon emphasized his consistency in his pursuit of the singer, saying, But that particular week, I was on top of my game. Everything I said was witty, you know what I mean? He recollected a specific incident, saying, I remember coming downstairs and Jay-Z had this sigh. His friends were teasing him and making jokes. However, it seems like Jay-Z won the game and he has reportedly also dated Aaliyah. This also caught fans' attention slash one of them wrote, When Aaliyah was interviewed back in 1997, she stated that she still admired R. Kelly. There were never any signs of trauma coming from her when asked about her alleged marriage with Robert. Additionally, from what Dame is saying, Aaliyah never said anything pertaining to what he believes R. Kelly did to Aaliyah. Right before she died, she was jamming to R. Kelly and Jay-Z's song, Not Guilty, at her listening party. Another one added, I wish she would have went with her gut and never got on that plane and wait for another flight. I legit loved her music and her dancing. When she died, I was so effing sad and like, no, why her lord, why? Rip Aaliyah, she was such an amazing singer. One more person penned her emotions as, I'm surprised at all the comments stating R. Kelly was railroaded when there was an insurmountable amount of evidence against him. It's disappointing that individuals only started to speak up when the S hit the fan. Imagine how many women and men could have been spared the trauma if R. Kelly was sat down a long time ago. And yet Jay-Z collaborated with R. Kelly, which also makes people think that what Kelly did to Aaliyah. Jay-Z was also involved. Aaliyah tragically passed away at the young age of 22 in 2001 due to a plane crash that occurred while she was leaving the Bahamas. At the time, she was in the midst of shooting the music video for Rock the Boat on the Island. The crash, which took the lives of Aaliyah and eight other passengers, was attributed to the aircraft being overloaded. Out of the Bahamas tonight, authorities have confirmed that R&B singer and actress Aaliyah is among eight people killed in a plane crash. In the years that have followed her untimely death, Aaliyah's music has continued to resonate with audiences and garner support from fans worldwide. Aaliyah's remarkable achievements in her career include three American Music Awards, two MTV Video Music Awards VMAs, and five Grammy nominations. Yo, <laughs> this is a shock. This is a big shock. I just started um, filming Anne Rice's Queen of the Damned in Australia, and my brother and I... Anyways, the former backup singer for R. Kelly even attested to witnessing a then 27-year-old Kelly engaging in S activity with the then 15-year-old Aaliyah on a tour bus. This revelation has rekindled the controversy and shed new light on the troubled dynamics within Rockefeller and between its co-founders Damon Dash and Jay-Z. Do you think you would have married her one day? Yeah. As you hear all this other stuff in the news with R. Kelly, how, do you, how does that make you feel about him? We talked about it. Up. For an extended period, the prevailing narrative surrounding R. Kelly and Alaya took a different and deeply troubling shape. Instead of highlighting the A nature of their relationship, it was often framed as a romantic love story. What is the deal with you and R. And Kelly? Are you all married or not? No, I'm not married. Um, Robert's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. He's a great producer, a great artist who I do admire. Official records reveal that Aaliyah and Kelly were married in an unlawful ceremony in 1994 when Aaliyah was a mere 15 years old, while Kelly was 27. This controversial union was swiftly annulled, with both parties vehemently denying its existence. And um, there's, there's nothing left in there. However, in the aftermath of Aaliyah's tragic death in 2001, accounts from her friends, family, and former boyfriends began to surface, painting a grim picture of the alleged A she endured at the hands of R. Kelly. 
Furthermore, with the emergence of news about Kelly's sustained A relationships and the exposure of his purported S cult in 2017 during the Me Too movement, discussions surrounding what transpired between him and Aliyah have now ignited a widespread moral outrage that was conspicuously absent just a few years ago. Theirs wasn't a love story that defied age, writes journalist Kathy Yandoli in her 2021 biography Baby Girl, better known as Aliyah. It was a tragedy that Aliyah endured and somehow moved past to become an icon in her own right without him. Even back in 1994, it should have been glaringly evident that the significant age difference and power dynamics between Aliyah and Kelly posed a serious risk to her well being. Aliyah, just 15 years old and a minor, was under the professional guidance of Kelly, who was 27 at the time. Any romantic involvement between them would likely have been detrimental to Aliyah. The burden of responsibility for such a relationship clearly rested with the adult in the equation, which was R. Kelly. Yeah, uh, you was uh, 15 when you uh, begin to, uh, to sing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when the first album came out. However, in the aftermath of their relationship, including events before Kelly's 2006 arrest for the possession of child and the subsequent rehabilitation of his career, their secret marriage was often sensationalized as a celebrity scandal rather than being recognized for the concerning circumstances it represented. Tragically, R. Kelly's abuse of Aaliyah was sometimes unjustly framed as something shameful about Aaliyah herself, rather than acknowledging the culpability of Kelly. Aaliyah made deliberate efforts to distance herself from Kelly after news of their marriage became public. She ceased collaborating with him, embracing a new musical direction with Missy Elliott and Timbaland. In the seven years between her separation from Kelly and her untimely passing, Aaliyah tactfully downplayed the incident whenever it was brought up in public. So the radio station wanted to dedicate that song to the ex-boyfriend. This wasn't a personal ex. thing, was it? Uh, no, this wasn't a personal experience for me, but okay. it's how we call it. Yeah, I'm sure. However, in an ironic twist, the story of what R. Kelly did to Aaliyah became intertwined with her public image. As her star continued to rise, her youth and innocence became central to how the world perceived her S, and her S, in turn, played a significant role in what endeared her to her audience. So today, two decades after her tragic death, discussions about Aaliyah force us to grapple with the challenge of separating Kelly A from Aaliyah's image and confront the question of whether it's even possible to do so. Aaliyah's journey into the music industry began at a remarkably young age. At just 12 years old, she had already been fervently pursuing her musical ambitions for years. Her early experiences included appearing on Star Search at the tender age of 10 and performing alongside her aunt Gladys Knight during one of Knight's Las Vegas concerts when she was 11. By the time she reached 12, it was evident to those around her, including her manager Barry Hankerson, that she was ready to consider creating her own album. R. Kelly shared this sentiment, and in 1993, when Aaliyah was only 14, they embarked on the production of her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. You loved her? Yeah. 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 Are you uncomfortable talking about her? Um. Not really uncomfortable, but just very respectful. This debut album achieved considerable success, debuting at number 24 on the Billboard charts in May 1994. It also earned Alaya nominations at prestigious events like the American Music Awards and the Soul Train Awards. While many critics believe they understood what made the album so exceptional, the common consensus was that R. Kelly played a pivotal role in its success. A. Leah's Back and Amp Fourth is a fixture in the Pop Top 5 partly because of R. Kelly. He not only produced and wrote Back and Amp Fourth, but he also does the rapping, explained the LA Times in 1994. Getting airplay for a single by a new artist is tough, unless it features R. Kelly doing everything but the lead vocals. Fans love just about anything he does and Back and Amp Fourth is the next best thing to a new R. Kelly single. Even after Aaliyah had established herself and her voice and everyone knew what an Aaliyah album sounded like, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number still sounded strikingly like an R. Kelly album rather than an Aaliyah album. It was basically like listening to an R. Kelly album, but with a little girl singing, album sequencer Jeff Sledge told Vibe in 2014. Obviously, the subject matter was an S, but the overall production and the sound of the record was like a Robert album as a little girl. Kelly seems to have been intent on presenting Aaliyah to the world as a miniature version of himself, and not just in the way her album sounded. 
In Iandali's Baby Girl, Aliyah's stylist Kimya Warfield Range recalls that Kelly insisted Aliyah be dressed like him for her videos, in an oversized sweatsuit that would reveal her midriff with dark sunglasses. He also produced a leather vest for her, a miniature version of the vest he wore on his album covers and tours, with a license plate for Illinois, Kelly's home state, on the back. Range didn't feel the vest particularly fit Aliyah's look, but both Aliyah and Kelly insisted she wear it. He was the influencer, Kimya said. They already had an image set for her. R. Kelly's influence on Aliyah extended beyond just her music videos and album production. In the period following the release of her album, they started to adopt similar clothing styles for their public appearances. In fact, they often dressed alike when they were seen out and about, and they were frequently photographed together in public. They made it a point to let everyone know they were the best of friends. All of these actions didn't go unnoticed, and the tabloid media began to take notice, raising a collective eyebrow at their seemingly close relationship. The two are obviously close, snarked YSB magazine in 1994. It's no wonder they were thought to be cousins. Not! Everybody seems to think that y'all are either girlfriend and boyfriend or cousins or friends, said Sherry Carter on BET's video Soul Gold, when Aaliyah and R. Kelly appeared in matching outfits. Let's get the record straight. In December 1994, Vibe magazine published the marriage certificate between R. Kelly and Aaliyah, confirming what had previously been a rumor. Over the nearly three decades since their clandestine and illegal marriage, there has been substantial reporting on the events that transpired, particularly highlighted in the explosive 2019 Lifetime docuseries, Surviving R. Kelly. Journalist Jim Derogatis, who initially broke the story of Kelly's child S tape in 2000, has been reporting on R. Kelly and his actions ever since. All right, Al, thank you. On Wednesday, a shocking development. Police arrested a popular singer on child charges. According to Smith's account, Aaliyah returned to her family in Detroit the day after the wedding and disclosed what had transpired. Her family assumed responsibility for the situation, and on September 29, 1994, the marriage was officially annulled. Aaliyah conveyed her desire to never see Kelly again, and her family took steps to ensure her well-being. Well, to let all my fans know, but I have a right, you know, they support me, right. so I'm here to let them know I'm not married. Um, that was a rough time for me. At the time, it appears that the family's understanding was that the marriage, while clearly an ill-advised decision, was essentially the result of two young individuals who cared for each other getting caught up in a difficult situation. Damon Dash, who was in a relationship with Aliyah at the time of her tragic passing, then shared in Surviving R. Kelly that Aliyah was too emotionally scarred by her relationship with Kelly to confide in him fully. She could only reveal limited details. That dude was a bad man. And then, in the recent interview, he explained everything more openly and shared some previously undisclosed details about the romantic life of the singer known for At Your Best. Aaliyah, who had kept her relationship with Dash private, was confirmed to have dated him from 2000 until her unfortunate passing. They had even contemplated marriage. However, one of Dash's most surprising revelations concerned a brief romantic involvement between Aaliyah and Jay-Z, as the rapper had reportedly made significant efforts to pursue her. We talked about it up to the point where it hurt. And then she said, I don't want to talk about it no more. Jay-Z has been in a happy marriage with the global superstar Beyonce since 2008. The couple shares three children, including the well-known Blue Ivy, and a set of twins named Sir and Rumi. In the aftermath of Aliyah's tragic passing, the rapper has continued to create numerous records and collaborate with various production companies, significantly boosting his net worth beyond that of many in his industry. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, thank all the producers and dream for writing a song, Justin, and all the, uh, you know, typical things. I want to thank God. During a 2009 interview with Page Six, Damon Dash mentioned that everybody was trying to get to Aaliyah, but he admitted that he didn't pursue her as vigorously as Jay-Z did. Rumors circulated in 1999 about the rapper dating the actress from Queen of the Damned when they were 29 and 20 years old, respectively. However, Dash eventually won Alia's affection, and any potential romance with Jay-Z never came to fruition. I did not know Jay was trying to holler at her, but then it just happened like that, the film producer said about unexpectedly falling for the one in a million singer. He was trying, I was trying, everybody was trying, he was going hard. Then there was this different version of the story. Dame went behind Jay-Z's back and hollered at Aaliyah. It came from producer Choke No Joke, who worked at Rockefeller Records. 
a hip-hop label co-founded by Dash Jay-Z and Kareem Biggs Burke. Contrary to the implications made in Choke No Joke's statement, it appears that the former Raqqa fella owners grew apart primarily due to professional conflicts. In fact, Aliyah even spent time at the house shared by Dash and Jay-Z just weeks before her tragic accident. In 2003, Jay-Z and Dash decided to end their collaborative efforts due to creative differences. We've always been polar opposites, the rapper remarked. For a period, they maintained that they were still friends. Fast forward to 2021, Dash even proceeded to sue Jay-Z over the streaming rights for his 1996 studio album, Reasonable Doubt. Their feud is a long battle which started from their dating days with Aaliyah and Jay-Z, despite knowing Kelly's true nature, proceeded to work with him. However, people believe that Jay-Z can go to the extreme limits of selling any artists for money. One person wrote, Kelly checkmating Jaysnake on the chessboard Jaysnake loves to play so much to bring him down will be the best news about Jaysnake. Another person added, Aaliyah, OMG, it wasn't just R. Kelly that wanted her. He ended up marrying her in the end, but Jay-Z, Timbaland, Damon Dash, they are all that we know of, they all prey on a 15-year-old girl. Beyonce ain't telling on her husband the father of her kids, Foxy in and out of prison, she ain't telling either. You can further take an idea when Kelly's former personal assistant, Demetrius Smith, provided consistent accounts in various sources, including Soulless, Surviving R. Kelly, his own book, The Man Behind the Man, and during Kelly's 2021 trial, that Aaliyah and Kelly married because Aaliyah became pregnant. Right now, I'm producing a uh, very talented uh, lady, <laughs> young lady. She's 14, uh, Aaliyah. Smith recounted that Aaliyah contacted Kelly while he was on tour in Miami, expressing her suspicion of being pregnant. After consulting with his lawyer and accountant, they advised Kelly to marry Aaliyah. At Kelly's 2021 trial, a Jane Doe testified that Kelly proceeded with the wedding to legally grant Aaliyah permission for an abortion, as it would have otherwise required her parents' consent. Yeah, Vinny, you know, I think I don't think that's going to work because the of the toy so many. or the cross examination. Any S contact between R. Kelly and Aaliyah in 1994 would have constituted, at the very least, statutory R. Yet, even after the publication of their marriage certificate made it evident that something inappropriate had transpired between them, the media largely approached the story with, at best, a tone of an unconventional love story, and at worst, as a judgment on Aliyah's so-called Lolita image. In essence, it was as if the young girl who sang Age Ain't Nothing But a Number was being blamed for the situation she found herself in. Often, the story was reduced to a sensational celebrity scandal, something to gossip about and make pop culture references to. It's important to note that R. Kelly had written, produced, and dressed Aaliyah for the song Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, which played a significant role in creating Aaliyah's beautiful pseudo Lolita image in the first place. When the song became associated with a scandal, the responsibility for it seemed to unfairly shift onto Aaliyah. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.